This is my uh, vintage German made uh, Kerrer bench lathe, or maybe it's called a uh, pattern maker lathe. I guess the name uh, probably depends on where you live in this world. It's about a hundred years old and it has an uh, old school sliding spindle threading mechanism. A while back uh, I got asked to uh, demonstrate the uh, thread cutting uh, capabilities in a uh, YouTube video. Unfortunately I don't have many uh, useful templates. Most of them are for a uh, very fine metric thread. But uh, I do have a uh, 8 TPI template and that's the same thread as uh, on the spindle nose. So I thought uh, let's try and make a uh, spindle nose uh, protector. Twenty five, twenty six millimeters should be enough. Let's uh, cut some stock. Ten minutes, long enough to take a good dump. I've tried making an uh, 8 TPI thread before using this uh, big uh, tab, but uh, I wasn't strong enough to tap through a piece of steel. So this uh, old tab is uh, only useful for showing me that uh, I need to drill a 7 8 uh, hole. But like many things these days, uh, imperial measurements are probably uh, politically incorrect, so I will drill the hole um, uh, 22 millimeters, and uh, that should be uh, close enough. I changed my mind and I uh, drilled the hole 21 millimeters so uh, that I can uh, now bore it out to get a better finish. The uh, finish left by the uh, drill is actually uh, pretty poor. The finish isn't uh, bad but uh, there was some chattering. I'll uh, take a measurement now and uh, I'll probably have to take another uh, light cut. It turns out the hole is already at 23 millimeters now. I guess I screwed it up somewhere. Or uh, that uh, 21 uh, drill bit is uh, cutting bigger holes than expected. So it looks like this is going to be a uh, sloppy thread again. But uh, hey, it's only a, a thread protector, right? Doesn't matter that much. Um, because the uh, thread on the spindle doesn't um, uh, run all the way to the uh, register and now I have to open up this side here to just under uh, 27 uh, millimeters I'll uh, finish this off camera the uh, camera is just too much in the way 26, 8, 2 well that should fit. I want to uh, cut a bit of a lead in for uh, the thread but I don't want to change the uh, angle on the top slide because it's a lot of work to uh, get it back uh, square with the lathe. So I'm using my boring bar at a bit of a strange angle and it's actually hanging off the side of the uh, tool rest. I couldn't get the angle uh, right with the uh, boring bar so uh, I ground down this uh, old video tool to uh, get some clearance and uh, well hopefully it is uh, sharp I think that's a pretty nice lead in maybe I overdid it a bit but it should help with the uh, start of the uh, thread cutting. Before uh, I start cutting some thread I will uh, try and quickly explain how the uh, sliding spindle thread cutting mechanism works. Um, it's basically uh, very simple. For every thread you need a template 
and uh, for every seven templates you have a uh, star nut with uh, seven uh, thread positions that uh, match the templates um, I guess uh, six or eight uh, might also be possible when installed on the lathe the uh, star nut is uh, fixed to a uh, vertical sliding plate on, uh, on the back of the headstock and uh, the template is uh, mounted on the uh, spindle moving the uh, vertically sliding plate up the uh, threads now interlock and uh, the spindle can now push itself uh, forwards or backwards against the uh, star nut here is the 8 uh, TPI template uh, mounted on the spindle and uh, when not engaged it just pointlessly uh, turns around with the rest of the spindle well maybe uh, not completely uh, pointless without the uh, template the uh, spindle can move uh, forward freely because uh, there is no support for this uh, bearing ring over here this bearing ring rides against this uh, bearing surface here which is mounted on the uh, vertically sliding plate and uh, it will move out of the way when you engage threading and that way the spindle can move forward of course this is no longer possible when the threads are interlocked and uh, since we're uh, talking about bearings this here is the uh, thrust bearing for the lathe It's a uh, very simple but um, effective construction, but uh, it also means that the uh, spindle has no true hole. Um, one more thing, the template isn't uh, keyed to the uh, spindle, so I've done up this nut as tight as possible, and I'm hoping the uh, template won't move, because that will uh, ruin the thread. Here you can see the uh, star nut mounted on the uh, vertical sliding plate with uh, the thread matching the template in the uh, above position. When unlocking the uh, sliding plate a uh, spring will push it uh, upwards and the uh, star nut and template will interlock. I think that's uh, pretty violent so usually I will dampen the spring with my hand. After locking the uh, sliding plate again, the lathe is now uh, ready to cut or copy some thread. As you can see, you can only cut uh, rather short threads because you will quickly run out of template. But uh, it should be more than enough for what I'm trying to do here. I uh, mounted my new internal threading tool on the uh, tool post and I'm just about ready to do my uh, first uh, threading job using inserts I uh, loosened up the belt and I'm going to uh, turn the spindle by hand at uh, slow speeds the uh, electric motor doesn't have enough power anyway and uh, at higher speeds uh, I risk running the uh, uh, chuck into the uh, cross lights I do wonder how this was done originally this uh, lathe might have had a uh, treadle mechanism and I don't think a uh, treadle mechanism uh, works very well at uh, slow speeds let's uh, take the first cut and this will be a, a 0 0.3 millimeter deep here we go That sounded like a tip breaking. Alright, I reached the end. I'm backing out the tool.
tip still there. That's good. Here we go again. As I uh, get deeper, it gets harder and harder to turn the spindle. I have to uh, take lighter and lighter cuts. I'm now um, 1.2 millimeter deep. I'm using this uh, dial indicator to keep track how deep I'm cutting and uh, also for uh, backing out the tool and returning it to the uh, correct position. Uh, currently I'm about 1.6 millimeter deep and uh, I need to go to about 2.5 uh, millimeters. I'm uh, constantly removing the chips with my uh, little magnet. It uh, helps reduce the risk uh, of breaking the tip. And I'm also using plenty of cutting oil. I'm now about two millimeters deep. I am uh, about two and a half millimeters deep and uh, I'm taking a couple of spring uh, cuts now and uh, then I will uh, take off the chuck, uh, turn it around and uh, check if it uh, fits. I moved the, the tool out of the way and uh, if necessary it shouldn't be too hard to um, line up the uh, pointy bit again. Uh, hopefully there is enough clearance to uh, take off the chuck. There's uh, a lot of burrs and uh, sharp edges on here. So I'll uh, try and clean it out with a pick because uh, it's not going to fit like this. I uh, assumed that the thread on here would be one inch or uh, 25.4 millimeters but uh, and this is hard to measure but it, uh, it's definitely quite a bit more and I got the impression that it actually is a little bit tapered well, I just messed up my uh, first pointy bit um, in the rear of the uh, workpiece. It got stuck and, uh, well, I got impatient and uh, just pushed through and then uh, I could hear things uh, break. I've just broken my uh, second tip. I turned it uh, into the workpiece a bit too hard and uh, it had no problem uh, breaking off. Um, I'm getting a bit frustrated here and I'm starting to sweat from all this uh, manual labor. And on top of all, I have no idea how deep I'm cutting at the moment. So at this point, I'm also lightly cutting the uh, um, register opening here. So I must be deep enough. But I will take a few more uh, spring passes. And as long as uh, chips come off, I will keep doing that. One more pass and then I'll uh, flip the chuck around. The uh, thread looks uh, a lot better now. There are still a few burrs here, especially at the start of the thread. But further down it looks okay. I'm pretty sure the uh, first tip also got damaged at some point without me noticing it. Alright, I'll uh, clean this up a bit and then uh, it's time for a test fitting. Here goes nothing. Oh, there is a start. The uh, register might not fit anymore because the uh, threading tool. Oh. 
Well, that's a shame. Well, I think that should do it. Here we go again. That's pretty okay. I can't believe I spent half my Sunday cutting a few threads. So there you go, one uh, thread protector. Now I uh, have to smarten it up a bit. That uh, probably wasn't very smart because now uh, it's pretty much stuck on the spindle. Um, I'll probably drill a hole uh, in the side so I can use a uh, hook spanner to loosen it up again. And then later on maybe even add a bit of knurling. But uh, for now I'm calling it a day because later on I uh, want to watch the Formula 1 race. And uh, maybe do a little editing to uh, stay awake. Let's see if I uh, can blend all this footage into a uh, less than 20 minutes video. Now, I think we can all agree that this is a uh, pretty much useless tool. Especially when considering I don't have any uh, uh, tools that fit the uh, uh, spindle nose taper. But um, as my uh, first project on this lathe, it was uh, kind of fun to make and... Uh, a pretty good learning experience. At some point I might actually try and uh, make a uh, color chuck or something else that is a uh, bit more useful. Anyway, to be continued. In the next video I'm going to make a backing plate for a little four jaw chuck. And this is going to be a silent video, so no talking. Because I'm kinda sick of hearing the sound of my own voice when editing all this cinematic garbage. But perhaps I will also try and cobble together a short voiceover version.